Hey everyone, I wanted to talk a little bit tonight about the privilege that women have in society, um, specifically in the U.S., and how incredibly ungrateful they are for the freedoms that they have that they are not required by the military to put their lives on the line in order to enjoy. The reason that I think this issue really needs to be discussed is I'm completely fed up with the way that women degrade men. Yes, there are some men that are bad apples. There are just as many women that are equally as horrendous in the way they conduct themselves. And I think the important thing that we need to talk about when we talk about women screaming at the top of their lungs for equality is I don't believe that these women that are screaming that want equality of opportunity, I think they want equality of outcome without the same sacrifice. And when we talk about the sacrifices that women make in society, they are substantial, but they are in a completely different way than the sacrifices that um, men have to make in society. There are two different extremes in terms of the expectation of what one or the other of the genders is willing to sacrifice. So for all those people screaming about um, recognizing different gender pronouns and all of that stuff, let's have a discussion about women, biological women, that want to be referred to as men. Let's talk about whether or not, if the draft were reinstated, if those biological women that want to be referred to as men would then be required in a draft to be in the military and potentially in harm's way as a result of them wanting to identify other than their biological gender. I understand that this topic is going to annoy some people and my position on it is going to annoy some people, but I don't think that there is thought really put into that. And yes, we haven't had a draft in the U.S. in a long time, but we have an enormous amount of injuries within the military as a result of the mandates. Uh, the adverse events are off the charts and they've tried to scrub that from, I think it's the DMED database. They've tried to scrub a lot of that data, but it's still in there. It's still obvious. If you talk to the people that are enlisted, it becomes very evident that there are a lot of people that are incapable of performing their roles in the military as a result of injury they sustained due to coercion or just because they were completely willing to go along with that emergency use authorization protocol. When we have a limited amount of people in the military that can do the jobs that they were hired and trained to do, that forces the country to have to bring in new people. Then you also have to contend with the fact that recruiting is extremely difficult for the military right now. There are a lot of people that are in the military that are doing their more than 40 hours a week in the military and the income that they're making being a member of the military is so abysmal due to inflation that they're being told they have to go and work a second job 
and that is the only way that they can survive and provide for their family. Well, that's insane. Um, and we need to talk about the dysfunction, the, the fiscal dysfunction that's facilitating that. There are a lot of things that are facilitating the economic downturn that we are all experiencing right now. But I think that our focus is on the wrong things. I think that when we spend so much time focused on how someone chooses to identify rather than increasing skill sets in math and science and engineering and things along those lines, we're going to continue to have a society that's behind the eight ball in terms of its ability to do what it needs to do to survive in a global economy. Unfortunately, we do not have leadership, competent leadership, that is enabling us to succeed as a society. There are several people in this country that are pushing back hard against what's been going on, and rightly so, because in order to ensure our survival, and, there's, and the survival of future generations, this is what's required. If you're uncomfortable pushing back against the status quo that is hell-bent on disenfranchising you as a citizen and disenfranchising your children, I don't know what to tell you. It sounds to me like your priorities are all screwed up and you don't even appreciate the freedoms that you've been afforded. I guarantee you, though, you will miss them when they're gone.